Hey, hey, Virgo, welcome to your October reading. So, we've got a solar eclipse happening in Libra on October 2nd. That is your house of money and values, the things that you care about, um, the way that you walk through life, the way that you walk your talk. So, every new moon offers a fresh start, right? It's this opportunity to say, okay, clean slate, what do we want to begin doing around here? But this eclipse in particular is attached to the south node. The south node being the point in astrology that represents where we've been, things we've already learned, lessons we've already mastered, and continuing to retread this old ground is a little bit like going back to class, sitting in your graduation cap and gown like, I'm ready. And it's like, but you already graduated. What are, we, what are we doing here? So we don't want to stay in our comfort zone, retread old ground. We want to embrace the new start that is being offered to us with this eclipse which involves simultaneously letting go of, releasing, exfoliating off old dead ways of ways of valuing ourselves, things that maybe we have changed our mind about, like, oh, I actually don't hold this as a value anymore and I can really let that go and let myself be a little more free, walk my talk a little bit more because I realized I don't care this much about what everybody thinks of me. That could be one of the values because this is a Libra eclipse, right? So like people pleasing, um, maintaining equilibrium at all costs, like, oh wait, no, I value myself or my truth or fill in the blank more than keeping the peace. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go. Or this is also the house of money and especially personal money, right? We had the lunar eclipse, the full moon a couple weeks ago in your house of other people's money, debts, etc. This is the house of how I make money. Is there something that you want to let go of so that you can feel a little bit more in alignment? Questions to keep in mind as we get into your reading. What do you value? And what are you realizing that you maybe no longer value and you are ready to embrace a more um, self-directed path? All right, let's get into some cards now that we've talked stars, Virgo. Want to see what is showing up for Virgo in October spirit, the truth for Virgo's highest good. We want to know how they are showing up, what qualities they are bringing forward in a persona. And then we want to know where they stand based on the recent past, where they've been, where they are standing now. And based on those past and present decisions, Spirit, we want to look at how the future is unfolding for Virgo people. Thematically, what is the arc? What do you want to make them aware of? What is around and available for Virgo in the month of October, Spirit? And how can they best navigate it? What is your advice for Virgo in the month of October in order to step into their authentic highest good? Peace, contentment, fulfillment, abundance, ease, love. How can they step into that in the now spirit? How can they use the truth of what is showing up in October for their highest good? Wow. Spirit never ceases to amaze me. That's interesting. I'm like, spirit is, <laughs> spirit is showing me a pregnant woman having contractions. And they're literally saying it takes contractions to achieve expansion. You know what I mean? Um, wow. Like to give birth to something. Okay. Now, before we go on, I want to pull one more. Spirit, can you tell me a little bit more? about what's on the other side of this path, of this striking out on their own to do things their way, spirit. What lies on the other side for the Virgos who make that choice? Beauty fucking full. Okay, so first things first, you come through as the King of Cups in your reading, Virgo. Um, very emotionally balanced. I mean, we talked about equilibrium before, but this is like a true equilibrium. This is the equilibrium that comes from really knowing yourself, emotionally speaking, on a deep level and not allowing yourself to be like rocked 
by the emotional waves that rise up in you because you have an awareness that it's like, well, yeah, that makes sense that I'm feeling um, jealous because I just saw that thing that happened to that friend of mine. And it doesn't mean I hate my friend. It doesn't mean I don't want them to have this good thing. It means that like, oh, damn, I want a piece of that or whatever. So it's like I'm not getting washed out to see, oh, my God, who even am I? Am I a bad person? Blah, 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 because I felt, no, I have feelings. Feelings are not under our control, but they can be... Um, managed gently lovingly they can be given compassion and room to get out of those big peaks and into like oh okay a gentler flow right they need space to do that and they need calm calm space this is why the king of cups is like the supreme space holder of the tarot it's like a therapist where it's like you can be having a torrential downpour across from me and I'm here with you. I'm holding the space. I'm reflecting gently back to you the truth of what you're experiencing so that you can know that you are seen and heard and that can bring the storm down. You know what I'm talking about? So you are able to give that to yourself and also to other people. And for some of you, this may be like your work. This may be the what you literally do to make money. That's just what I'm hearing for some of you. That will not be true for all of you. Some of you, it's just like, this is the version of you that is showing up and stepping forward and is most at play in the month of October. And these are the qualities that bring you closer to that highest good that we're talking about, because that is always my prayer, is like, what aspects of themselves do you want to highlight knowing that will bring them to their highest good? So that emotional maturity that willingness to ride out a wave rather than maybe make a split decision. You know what I mean? Like, a oh, I'm feeling this, so I'm going to do that. No, I know my own emotional wave. I'm very familiar with it. So I know that maybe right now I'm really sad or I'm really mad or I'm feeling whatever. And I need to go take a walk and eat a good meal, take a shower and a nap. And then I will get up and make this decision and having that kind of clarity around your emotions. You know what I'm talking about? So, sitting in the past, Nine of Pentacles. This is a really interesting arc. Nine of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, and then the Five of Pentacles, clarified by the Ace of Pentacles. We'll talk about it. Nine of Pentacles is stability. Nine of Pentacles is I'm doing really well. Not only I can see that I'm doing very well, everybody can see the tangible results, the money, or the client list, or the booked calendar, or the house that I just bought, or the garden that is giving me its harvest, or whatever. Everyone can see the fruits of my hard work, and I get to be proud of, of those fruits, right? So there is a sense of stability, there is a sense of self-appreciation. Love to see it. Love to see it, Virgo. And if you're not giving yourself some self-appreciation, I think that you ought to, because that gives room for your um, desires to spark. Why do I say that? Ace of Wands is sitting in the present. Spirit started the reading with, you might have this urge to walk your talk or do something different that involves a change in the way that you make money. That's literally what I see playing out here. Ace of Wands is a point of inspiration. It's the spark of a great idea that if given fuel can become something that sustains you, right? Given the right care, given the right discipline, because wands require discipline, it's fire, right? We don't just like light a fire on the ground and go like, oh yeah, I'm sure that'll be all right. No, like we build a little rock pit, we bear, you know, <laughs> we dig a hole or we put it in a hearth or a kiln because it can do a lot and it can do a lot of damage, right? So controlled, um, gentle, loving manipulation of your spark. So working with your creativity, working with the idea, not just like letting the idea come and go because a spark can come and go, right? If you don't do something with it, if you don't feed it or fuel it or give it room, air, it will go out. So you can have a great idea and then forget about it because you were in the middle of traffic, right? Or somebody walked in and said something to you and you completely lost your train of thought. Guard your Ace of Wands carefully. Guard your inspiration, your great ideas, your spiritual channelings, etc. Um, guard them carefully. Some of you want to take your idea and go further with it. I feel that some of you, this is as straightforward and as like simple as you take a pay cut because you want to do more of your own thing. That's what I see with this Five of Pentacles for some of you. Um, Five of Pentacles is also choosing deliberately to go down a path that might feel less conventional, 
less institutionally protected than other paths. So things like non-traditional business models, non-traditional marriages and things like that. And that's what I'm hearing. Some of you, it's like, I don't um, couple up the way that other people do. I'm doing it my own way. Um, some other people, it's like, I don't want to make money this way. I want to do it my own way. One way or another, it feels like some of you are giving something up, sacrificing some of that safety or some of that, you know, nine of pentacles. Like maybe I'm trading my nine pentacles for five. Again, taking a pay cut or risking some of what I've built up in order to see if I can make something that feels more like me work for me. Well, ace of pentacles sits on the other side of that. So there is, it's another ace, right? <laughs> it's another seed, another opportunity. So here is a job offer or another avenue of income or um, your idea, if you plant it, if you care for it, the same way as if you guard your ace of wands, your brilliant um, inner light, the light that is resonating with something somewhere and is pulling you toward it. And you may feel confused. The moon is sitting in the, po the position representing your guidance. Things don't always make sense. And I know for a Virgo, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> I understand. It doesn't have to be all clear all the time. Um, it will make more sense as you go. It's a good thing that you're coming through as the King of Cups because that is someone who is willing to navigate the weirdness of emotional and unconscious responses. Um, again, scrolling past something and, and feeling insecure or feeling something that you didn't expect to feel. Oh my God, my friend's getting married and I feel sick to my stomach. And it's like, wait, but I love my friend and, and I'm excited for them and I'm happy for them and I feel sick to my stomach. I want that. Or I'm not ready for them to go off on this new chapter or whatever. And knowing that like that doesn't make sense, it's feelings. Feelings don't make sense. They're feelings. Like they're not logical. They're just not. That doesn't mean they're meaningless. They have tons of meaning. It's just not meaning in a logical way. Do you know what I'm saying? How can you navigate your quote unquote um, darker, and by that I mean your unconscious parts? What do you need to notice about how your unconscious parts are having you manage your money or um, expand or not or chase your dreams or not? The guidance is also, I mean, the moon is about fear in many ways and facing our fears and walking up to something and finding, you know, um, there's a beautiful saying in French, entre chant et lu, forgive my accent, between dog and wolf. And that phrase represents the time of day of twilight where it's like the light is a little funny. It's beautiful, but it's funny where it's like, I can't tell if, is that a dog or is that a wolf coming at me? So not everything is as it seems. And sometimes you have to get a closer look at things to be able to determine, oh, that's a dog. I was, I was about to start running, but that's a dog. That's a friendly thing over there. So my fear of success when I really creep up on it is maybe a fear of being seen. And there are actually some very safe, good people I can practice being seen with and expand and grow that seenness or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? There's people I can be around that are also wrestling with mm, an addiction or a familial abuse thing or whatever, and they are struggling through it. And when we are all together, we can all see more clearly. These are all different things I'm hearing, okay? This does not apply whatsoever to every Virgo, but this is what I'm hearing. Three of Wands and the climate and the energy around you, expansion, the arrival of something and the expectation of that thing. You know, spirit it has this person, um, they've built a fire and the Three of Wands appears in the smoke, like sending smoke signals. Like if you send out the signal, you will receive a callback. So if you want something, don't sit back and wait. That's what I'm hearing. Five of Pentacles, Three of Wands, the Moon, move through the mystery. Take the mystery for what it is. It's, it's a journey, like in a fairy tale, where yes, you didn't understand how to get there, so you had to talk to 
the squirrel who was trying to find their acorns and you help them find their acorns so they point you out to how to go to Mr. Owl because Mr. Owl has a big high perspective and he can tell you exactly how to get to the wherever and you get to there and the owl needs help because their tree has been struck by lightning so you help them move over to a new tree and they tell you okay you got to go this way everything happens as it needs to happen and it doesn't fucking need to make sense stay awake stay lucid in the dream of life take the signs move bravely toward things that other people don't understand because you know that you need to move that way don't worry if it makes sense okay three of swords some things that make sense suck fucking ass your hopes and your fears three of swords that this will separate you further from some people and that is the truth that it will that following your own soul, that moving through the mystery of life that other people want to run the other way from because they don't want to walk into the moon, they want to walk into the sun. They do not want to walk into their mystery. They do not want to walk into their emotions. They do not want to walk into their patterns and go puttering around and looking around because it's going to hurt. And it's going to separate us from some other people because we're going to find that like, oh, this isn't true for me anymore. I need to move away from that. So some separation will occur, but also some individuation and some beneficial like snipping off of a uh, dead weight is just something that i'm hearing in the key position seven of cups you have a lot of options here the danger is that you can get lost especially with the moon especially with the three of swords and the five of pentacles it can get a little hard to see in the dark so you have to feel you can't trust what you see with the moon right it's like that's why you have to feel you have to use your intuition you have to do what feels right to be a deep roller a deep diver spirit is saying the truth wants to be known and the mystery wants to be uh, understood wants to be seen wants to be solved because everything in this universe wants to be known for what it really is if you will take the time to know yourself, your true self, and to advertise and step forward as your true self, you will be received by the people and the things and the situations that befit you. That's what I'm hearing. What do you think, Virgo? This is a very mysterious reading. I'm curious, please, if any of you have any feedback, like, oh, this is what I'm going through, or I think it might be this for me, I would love to hear how it's playing out for you. That's what the comments are for. If you ever want to get a personal reading, the way to do that is also just south of this video. I appreciate you being here, Virgo, and I really hope that this is helpful for you. An iconoclast is what you are becoming, and I can't wait to see it. Thanks for being here, and if I don't see you before then, I hope I see you in your mid-month reading. Bye-bye.